Hi, I'm Jeff. I made the Genesis Light Generator add-on, and here's a full walkthrough of all the features of the add-on. So you should see the tool over here. It's underneath the tool panel, and uh, it's called Genesis. So if you click this Generate Lights button, um, you do need to have an object selected. It will generate all the lights around it. The first thing it does is it makes all the collections. Uh, it makes a Genesis collection with Genesis utilities, and the empty is inside of that utilities folder. This empty is where all of the lights are pointing to. Uh, and then it makes all the lights in this collection called Genesis Lights. One quick note, when you click this Generate Lights button, it deletes all of the existing lights in the Genesis Lights collection. So just be careful when you do that. If you want to keep something, move it outside of this collection. Uh, you could rename the collection technically, and it would make a new collection called Genesis Lights. Um, everything should work just fine with that. There are five different light types within Genesis. The first five should be ones that you're pretty familiar with because these are just the default lights. And then I also have this plain lights, which is just a mesh object uh, that emits uh, color. So we've got point lights, which emit light in every direction. They look like this. We've got sunlights, which emit light from an infinite distance. And you'll just see which direction they're pointing. Their location doesn't actually matter. We've got spotlights, which are uh, the cone shaped ones. And we've got area lights, which are squares, and this is the default. Next, we've got the color modes, which will definitely need a little bit of explaining. So we've got the first one, which is range. And what these icons mean are where on the color wheel they're picking from. Uh, it's just a visualization to help you kind of understand what they are. So range is just going to pick between two different hue values. So it picks between this min and max hue value. So zero is red and one is also red and it's on the bottom of the wheel so if i had a range of zero to one it will use all of the available colors if i used zero to zero point three it would just go between red and green for example next we've got complementary which uh, shows this new color picker so that you can pick what your primary color is so complementary will use two hues which is why it's got two kind of slices on the uh, color wheel pie and they're on opposite ends. So if I pick this yellow, it will also pick this blue. If I pick this red, it will also pick cyan. If I pick this nice bright pink magenta color, it will pick green. So whatever is on the opposite side. Now, since using the exact same colors isn't that exciting, we also have this hue spread, which will spread out the colors that it picks from on both sides of the color wheel. You can definitely experiment with this. This is kind of just an arbitrary value. One is a pretty good amount of spread. Uh, 0.1 is a lot less. Um, and the maximum this can go up to is 15, which is probably way too much for most things, but uh, I let you have that power if you want. Triad is three hues on opposite sides of the wheel, 120 degrees apart. So if I picked red, it would also pick pure green and pure blue. If I picked this yellow, it would also pick cyan and the magenta. Next, we've got monochromatic, which should be pretty self-explanatory. It's just gonna use the one hue here, but you can use the hue spread to vary it a little bit. So it's helpful if you just want the lights to be one color. Next, we've got split complementary, which is pretty similar to triad and complementary, except the two colors that it picks on the opposite side of the color wheel are much closer together than they are in the triad. So if I pick red, uh, they're gonna be 160 degrees apart, so it's going to be more up towards the uh, cyan than it is towards the green. And last on the list, we have analogous, which is going to pick five colors on the same side of the color wheel, roughly. Um, so this hue spread will also spread these out. So if I picked red and used a hue spread of one, it would pick most of the reds around here. You can, again, increase this value to make the spread much further. Next, we have the different layout modes. So you can see here when I make these lights, it's going to put them in a sphere. We also have top sphere, which does basically the same thing, except it only keeps them above the horizon here. And lastly, we have the grid, which makes them in a grid above the floor. Uh, you can see they're a little bit too high right now, so I'm just going to bring this down to, say, 20 and hit generate again, and now they're lower. And it's just picking this number here, so a helpful tip is to use uh, a math function in here. So if you do 3 star star 2, that's 3 squared, which is 9. Or if you do five star star two, that's 25. And then if you generate these amount of lights, it's a nice square. If you view it from the top, you can see it's a square. If you have an, a random number, like let's say seven, 
you know, it might not be a perfect grid, but if you look at the objects in order, it generates them in a spiraling out pattern. So if I make this a bigger number like 25, and just for example, I'm gonna make the size smaller just so that you can see them a little bit easier. And it's always gonna base it off of your selection. So uh, make sure you have your object selected. Uh, you can see it starts in the middle and then it goes out in a spiral. So that's how the grid works. Uh, once the lights are made, you can move them wherever you want. So let's say I wanted all of these lights to be uh, lower, you know, I could lower them. And since they're tracking to this empty object, uh, they'll always be pointing in the right direction. If you don't want them to point into that direction, you can either delete the empty object, but it will make it again when you hit generate lights, or uh, something that I like to do is just move it really, really far down. Uh, so they're pretty much pointing down, um, but you know, whatever method you wanna do. So the number controls exactly how many lights are created. So if I go back to point lights and maybe make a sphere and I make 25, and I select my object here, it will make 25 lights uh, around the sphere. So nothing too crazy there. Um, the radius is how far away they are from your object. So if I make the radius one, they'll be very, very close to the object, maybe even inside of it. If I make the radius something like 15, they're gonna be even farther apart. The same thing for the top sphere, it's just how far apart they are. So it shows up as a radius for sphere and top sphere, and for the grid, it changes to the grid spacing, which is how far apart they are from each other. So if I generate this grid here, you can see they're all nice and spread apart. If I change the grid spacing to something lower, like two, they're gonna be much, much closer together. Next, we've got the grid height, which I did explain just a second ago, but again, that's just how far up they are from the selected object. It's kind of like the height from the floor, but Technically speaking, if your object was up here and you hit generate, it's gonna be uh, 10 units up from that object. So if you're ever wondering what's going on with that, that's what that means. Next, we've got the power multiplier, which is just an easy way uh, to make all of the lights brighter or darker when you generate them. So if you're noticing that your scene is too dark, you can use this power multiplier to make them twice as bright. So if I look at the values here, uh, we're getting 135,000 watts, and if I change it to something like 0.1, it's going to be much, much lower than that when I generate them again. So when I use the range color type, uh, it will give me uh, the min hue, max hue, and if I'm using any of the other color modes, like complementary, it will change to a color. So this base color is going to be the primary color that it uses to base the rest of the color types off of. And the hue spread is just how much randomness in the hues it uses to color the complementary triad, monochromatic, split complementary, and analogous uh, color modes. The min and max sat is the saturation, so it's going to pick between these values, and these are multipliers of your color that you pick. So if you pick a very pale color, it's not going to be more saturated than that. So if you want them to be uh, like very white, or very unsaturated, you could pick a very unsaturated color. If you want them to be saturated, use a more saturated color as your base color, but you can control the min and max. So if this was zero, some lights would be white. If this max is one, they will get up to full saturation that you pick here. The size of the light is exactly that, just how big the light is. Uh, if you use spotlights, it's also the angle. So if I make the angle very small, uh, they're going to be um, very narrow. If I use the default values of seven and 15, they'll be a lot bigger. And if you pick something like 30, they'll be full width, so 180 degrees. Min and max power is just the range that it will use for the power, and it also uses the power multiplier to multiply both of those together. So if you want them to be all the same power level, you could set both of these numbers to the same value. The lights with keyframes is a way to make a set of lights per frame in the timeline. So I'm gonna set my range to 20 frames. I'm gonna set the number of lights to five or it'll make five times 20 or 100 total lights. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. I'll go ahead and hit this lights with keyframe button and it'll take a second, but then after a second, it will make all these lights. You will probably have to advance your timeline backward and forward a frame, which I'm using my left and right arrow on my arrow key, or you can also use um, the timeline down here to scrub through them. But what it's doing is for each frame, it's uh, making all of these lights keyframed on and off in both the viewport and for render. 
So you can see here, if I make a little bit more room, on this first frame, we've got all of these lights here, and then on the next keyframe, they're keyframed off, and we've got a new set of lights that are on. I find this to be super helpful if you're trying to test a bunch of different lighting setups all at once, or for artistic effect, you could have all of the lights changing each frame. If for whatever reason the add-on isn't showing up for you, uh, you might just need to be in object mode. If you're in edit mode, uh, it'll probably disappear. That's just so that you don't accidentally do something when you're in edit mode. Also, like I said before, the empty can be moved around or it can be deleted and all the lights will just point straight down. Um, but I find it helpful to maybe move this around and then once you select your object again, uh, the empty will stay in the same place. So it's helpful for kind of directing your light to one spot. And the lights that Genesis make are just normal blender lights. So if, for example, you wanted to tweak the color a little bit or make it a little bit stronger or change the radius or do whatever you need to do, you can do that all after uh, the add-on makes the lights. Uh, you can move them around and it'll still point to the same spot because it's got that tracking on. You could go in and delete the tracking if you wanted to and just point it wherever you want it if you want. Like, you can do whatever you want because these are just normal blender lights. And that's all there is to it. That's everything with the Genesis add-on. Thank you so much for using the Genesis Light Generator add-on and take care.